Scene four, which is the, the banquet scene, often referred to as the ghost scene, is uh, probably one of the more famous scenes in Macbeth. The first thing to note is a play on words. This is a banquet. And who shows up but the person that, that was supposed to show up, the person that Macbeth says, fail not our feast, namely Banquo. So Banquo becomes the chief feast at the banquet, Shakespearean humor. But Macbeth is, in this scene, trying very hard to look happy and jovial, and he's laying it on pretty darn thick. And he says, you know your own degrees, alas, the hearty welcome, Ourself will mingle with society and play the humble host. See, he's sort of putting on a persona, this mask of happiness and joviality. But that mask of joviality and happiness falls when this terrible event, this supernatural event, occurs on stage. In Shakespearean drama, anytime you had witches, anytime you had the supernatural, anytime you had um, ghosts, it was a sign that something was terribly, terribly wrong. We see a similar thing later on in his play of Hamlet, for instance, with the father appearing to Hamlet. The murderers come in and say, well, we killed Banquo, and Macbeth says, well, that's great, but then he asks, did you kill Fleance? And the murderer said, well, Fleance escaped. And Macbeth has this great line, he says, then comes my fit again. I had else been perfect, I would have been perfect had I known that Banquo and Fleance were dead. Whole as the marble, founded as the rock, as broad and general as the casing air. And that's ironic because, of course, he's perfection is uh, perfection in killing somebody. But now I'm cabined, cribbed, confined, bound into saucy doubts and fears. Notice that k -k -k sound, cabined, cribbed, confined. The repetition of that sound of K's in the, in the line. It's like he's stuttering. He, he's, he's suddenly at a loss for words because he knows that the prophecy can come true as long as Fleance is alive. And in the midst of this, this uh, realization that Fleance has escaped, Lady Macbeth says, you don't keep the, the feast, you don't keep the cheer, you, your guests are wondering what's wrong with you. And he comes back with that mask on to say, oh yeah, here, I, here is our, our country's honored roof with a grace person from our banquet present, and they're all happy, but the ghost enters and sits at his seat. And they all say, well, here's a place reserved. But he goes and says, I can't sit there, there's somebody there, a ghost. No one else sees this ghost, and it takes the breath away from Macbeth. He's unmanned by the fact that he sees the ghost. But Lady Macbeth, trying to calm him, suggests, this is the very painting of your fear. It's the air-drawn dagger. You're seeing things, Macbeth. Get with it. Get a grip on yourself. You have become unmanned, is the word she uses, in seeing the, the supernatural results of his murder, his killing of Banquo. He's essentially seeing something that takes away his power to act. He becomes womanish. He loses that potency, much like what the door warden said back in the last act. It, uh, it, it gives you the, the desire, takes away the performance, for instance. And he suggests here when he sees this, right, that he is unmanned, he's, he's, he's lost his power, but he's amazed at this. Blood hath been shed ere now in the olden time, he says. I and since too, murders have been performed too terrible for the year, but the times have been that when the brains were out, the man would die. And here this guy's not dead, he's coming back from the dead. But now they rise with 20 mortal murders on their crowns and push us from our stools. We get pushed off by these ghosts from the place that we should be sitting. And the ghost appears to him the first time, and then it vanishes, and he tries to recover, and they say it's a fit that he has. And then the ghost re-enters a second time, and again he's, he's lost. He's avant, quit thy, my sight. I can't stand to look at you. He's just terrified of this supernatural thing. And uh, the ghost vanishes again. And she says, uh, you have, you've ruined the mirth. And Macbeth is amazed that no one else sees this, because he thinks what he sees is absolutely real. Whether it's in his mind or not, it's so real to him that it unmans him, takes his power away. And he says, can such things be and overcome us like a summer's cloud without our special wonder? You all think I'm strange, even with this disposition that I owe, when you can keep the color of your cheeks seeing the same thing. And his other lords looking at it, and finally said, well, what? Sights, my lord, what you, we don't know what you're talking about. And she, Lady Macbeth says, well, don't make him any more mad. Go, leave. And they all, they all say, well, good night. And she says, just don't stand on ceremony. Leave, go. And she boots them out of the hallway. And so he automatically is ruining his own court by the terrors that are inflicted upon him by his own, his own bad decisions. And the scene ends 
with a little exchange between Macbeth and Lady Macbeth, where he says, it will have blood. They say, blood will have blood. And she says, you lack sleep. And it's at this point you think that Macbeth, having seen a ghost, would stop from his murderous deeds, but he says, no, I'm mad at Macduff, and I'm going to go and I'm going to uh, take, you know, take this matter in hand that I hate Macduff and destroy his family. She says, you lack sleep. So yeah, yeah, we'll sleep. Why not? My strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. We are yet but young indeed. And that leaves us with the next issue, which is that uh, he goes to consult you know, what to do about this situation and ends up doing something very violent against Macduff. Let's look at the text in scene five. 